Welcome, everyone. Uh, it's my pleasure to have uh, Khalid as CEO, uh, Rene Lukanda, with us today. Uh, hi, Rene. Hi. Uh, so, you released a, a tremendously good Q2 report. You increased uh, uh, sales as, uh, as we expected, which is a very good uh, trajectory that you're showing since uh, Q1. And as a reminder, we have uh, initiated on Kalititas in, in early June uh, with a target price of uh, 300 sec and an upside that we see in the next two to three years of over 500 sec. Uh, just some uh, general questions. So you have been uh, delivering now very well on, on sales since the launch as with the first drug uh, ever to be approved in IGA nephropathy. Uh, how, how can you, is there something you can share in terms of the feedback you got from nephrologists and, and maybe also some some patient feedback uh, that you could see? Sure. No, Sonny, thank you. Uh, and we obviously were delighted about uh, what that we could uh, report uh, this Q2 uh, report. I think we are making great strides. I think we're very happy about where we are and where we ended up uh, for the quarter. Uh, and I think just as a kind of backdrop and, and a bit of a reminder, obviously, this is a rare disease. Uh, it's a chronic long term disease. Uh, physicians and nephrologists really, they see these patients kind of every three to four months. Uh, and so this is really it goes in the normal cadence. This is not something it's not a disease where, you know, you need medication tomorrow, uh, you know, on an acute basis. It's not an acute type of a setting. Uh, and so you will kind of get this to do. And I think what we're seeing is a broadening of the prescriber base. Uh, as well as, you know, a pickup in terms of revenues for, you know, more than a tripling of revenues quarter over quarter, which I think is 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 great. So we're very happy with where we are. In terms of the physician's feedback, I mean, as this is, as you mentioned, kind of the, the first and only drug approved, and I think most physicians are delighted. This is really nephrology has been an area that's not, they're not used to, they've not been uh, you know, having lots and lots of novel drugs uh, on the therapeutic side um, being available to nephrologists. So our kind of experience really is that there's a lot of excitement, you know, physicians are interested, they think it's great. Uh, and this drug is specifically really designed for IJ nephropathy, which I think that patients are also, um, you know, keen on. We, you know, we don't get direct feedback from patients. I think that a lot of times we can just see, you know, comments on social media, et cetera. But, you know, uh, you know, with interactions with a patient group that we have a great relationships with, I think that, you know, clearly the feedback we're getting from them is that, you know, they're super excited about having something uh, that actually can address this disease properly for, yeah. uh, you know. Thank you. That sounds exciting. And uh, are, are there any upcoming events like medical conferences uh, wh where you would be uh, presenting? And of course, there is the Pareto Healthcare Conference uh, in September. Yes, exactly. So we are presenting at a variety of conferences, uh, both in the US and Europe. Um, you know, a lot of the banks who cover us in terms of Citibank and Stiefel and Jefferies and Pareto, obviously, uh, and also SEB uh, and Penser. I think we will kind of be, uh, you know, appearing in a variety of, of, uh, of conferences over the next couple of months. So uh, hopefully we'll have an opportunity then to meet up again with investors and, and, and tell the story. OK, great. Thank you. And uh, and of course, you have only uh, scratched the surface uh, in the US so far. So there is such a big patient population. We estimate that the market over six billion dollars uh, uh, with the kind of pricing you're, you're getting in the US. Uh, and you mentioned in the Q2 call that there are around 4000 uh, prescribers. Uh, and of course, you currently have, have contacted a number, but uh, less than 10 percent. How are you planning to to reach all those, uh, are, are the, the 60 salespeople then uh, going to be enough for them? So we actually think that it is enough. Uh, and I think, you know, we always assess this. And from the beginning, I've said that, you know, if we feel that we need to expand the sales force, we will do that. But we prefer to do it on the basis of strength and interest yeah. and rather than just kind of throwing money at it and hoping that, you know, something comes out of it. Um, so I think it's really on that basis that, you know, we have decided to make this expansion, which I think is a great, you know, so it's a great kind of sign overall um, that, you know, we feel comfortable doing that. Um, but uh, but obviously the way that this works is obviously we have our sales force and sales team has already contacted, you know, many, many, many kind of uh, physicians, you know, uh, thousands of physicians. But obviously, 
you a lot of times you need to come back, you need to explain it. They have not heard about this drug before. They may not be familiar with it. Um, so obviously this is something where both reach and frequency matters. Um, it's, you have to kind of engage and, and talk to these physicians more than once generally. Uh, it's a very typical thing for all specialty products. Uh, and so I think this is something where again, we, you know, we want to right size our, our sales force so that we can you know, really have that kind of reach and frequency that we think is required uh, in order to uh, be effective and efficient and really support, uh, you know, the, the community of nephrologists. Makes sense, thank you. And uh, regarding the plants in, in Europe, so that's in the hands of uh, Stada, uh, your partner. Uh, what, what can we expect there over the coming uh, months? I mean, we, we have worked very, very closely, as we do with all of our partners, to really collaborate around this. And so, you know, as soon as we had the approval, you know, we really initiated the, the transfer process. Um, that timing of that transfer process is a little bit outside of our control. Uh, it is something that's really kind of a regulatory administrative process, um, but it's going very smoothly. And I think it's going, you know, uh, according to plan. So, I mean, obviously, as soon as that market authorization uh, holdership can be transferred, um, you know, our expectation is that, you know, Stada will launch the product. I think they have, you know, they're well prepared. And as I said, you know, we have had lots of, you know, uh, interactions and collaborations. I think we're very happy uh, with the partnership that we have with Stada. Um, and so we're very excited about uh, seeing the product being launched. Uh, and I am sure that Stada has exactly the same intention that obviously they want to be able to launch this product as soon as, as possible. Sounds great. And and one question maybe that uh, might be helpful for, for some investors looking at potential upcoming competitors is, uh, could you share some, some feedback on, on how important the EGFR data has been uh, also in your approval since uh, we remember in, in September, uh, the FDA has, uh, has requested some additional analysis on, on the EGFR data, uh, which, which caused that uh, three months delay there. And then he submitted that. So it shows that the FDA really looks uh, at, the, at the kidney filtration uh, data. Absolutely. Uh, and I think we we have kind of, um, you know, made this comment previously. And I think it's clearly something where, you know, proteinuria is, you know, an accepted endpoint. Uh, but in terms of an accelerated approval uh, and clearly even for full approval, I mean, EGFR is considered to be you know, extremely important. Um, and so it isn't really just kind of, you know, an ability to look at protein, you know, proteinuria kind of in isolation. Uh, it really is kind of, uh, you know, within the context of also what the impact is on the on the underlying disease and the best kind of metric that exists today to, to assess that really is EGFR, so the filtration rate. So I think, yeah, I think the, you know, the, the regulators have been very clear about the fact that, you know, they do want to have you know, strong support, um, you know, from the EGFR side as well to complement kind of the protein area data. Thank you. I think that makes sense. And it's also what we saw now in August uh, 3rd when uh, one of the competitors, uh, Travir, got actually a pushback from the FDA on, in a related disease because of lack of EGFR data for accelerated approval, at, at least. Um, uh, moving on from that uh, to, to I mean, the, uh, Nefecon, Tarpeo is, of course, the, the main story and then the European approval. But uh, uh, with your blockbuster drug it, it, in, in, in your pockets, it, it might uh, be a bit uh, forgotten that you have, uh, have another drug in the pipeline as well, where you're moving forward uh, fast, uh, as we could see also in, in, the, in Q2. Can you... Uh, Elaborate a bit on the progress of uh, Cetanaxib. Sure. So we're running two trials at the moment. Uh, we're running one uh, late stage trial in PBC, so the primary biliary cholangitis, um, which is a global trial, uh, you know, over 140 sites. It's a bit similar in terms of size and scope to kind of the Nefigard trial. Uh, and we're also running a smaller proof of concept trial uh, in head and neck really to look more at the characterization to characterize the drug in, in a better way. And so both of those trials, um, you know, have, um, you know, dosing and randomization has taken place. Um, and so they're up and running and, uh, you know, we're working extremely hard at what you always work hard at when you start these trials, which is, uh, you know, site initiation and all the contracts, um, you know, getting all the patients in and screened, et cetera. So, I mean, we're 
we're working you know we were very focused on this and obviously this is what our clinical team is, is spending their days on um, and I think it is challenging. It's always challenging. Uh, one should not say that, you know, recruitment of any rare disease uh, or even in oncology where there's a lot of a competition, it, you know, is a walk in the park. So we are, you know, we're working extremely hard at this. And so, uh, you know, we're certainly working towards our timelines uh, and we're excited uh, to kind of see, uh, you know, uh, the data come out of these trials, um, you know, as soon as possible. So, um, so I mean, we're, uh, you know, again, we're, we're excited and, um, you know, we have uh, we're working well again, partnered with CROs that, uh, you know, I think we're working well together uh, with them. Thank you. And maybe a follow up here, uh, uh, having been at the last uh, ASCO conference, the, the big uh, clinical oncology conference in, in Chicago, it was quite uh, almost saddening to see the, the progress in having neck cancer and, and, and see that there is really a big big uh, needs still there uh, do you have any uh, could, could you could we expect maybe some some early data ready to be presented at the next ASCO uh, from uh, Setanaxip in uh, Head and Neck yeah I mean that would be lovely <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think in terms of the data, so obviously what we're what we're targeting is to kind of get a sub, you know, a smaller number of patients and really just kind of look at from the biopsies of that to kind of, you know, be able to kind of uh, look at the, you know, the, the, the micro environment of the tumor uh, and to really see, you know, kind of, you know, say, you know, is that is the mode of action what we expect to be? Is that what we're seeing? Are we seeing an impact on caps? And I think if we can show uh, that kind of biomarker data where actually we can we can reverse caps to kind of acquiesce in fibroblasts. I think that would be super exciting uh, for Absolutely. us and I think for many others. So uh, as I said, we're certainly working as hard as we can to try and keep our, our timelines there. But, you know, it's a clinical trial at the end of the day. We'll have to see. But we certainly want to see that data as soon as possible as well. <laughs>